everybody and welcome. This is Terry, and this is another edition of the Market Today. Today, I am going to take a look at all of my half your peelings. Some growing better than others, but um, they're all still growing. Here is one that is a division of a multi-floral that did bloom for me last year. This is my Pathiopelum Green Horizon. Bloomed for me maybe a couple of years ago, I wanna say, because it suffered from being outside and I saved part of the plant and it has since put up one of these little babies, I think the one in the back here, nice flower. You can see the influence of both of the parents or both of the, um, yeah, both of the parents. Um, and then over this way, I have a couple on this table besides this path, Hermoniae, which is a natural hybrid I have another species here that is Path Gratexianum, which did bloom for me a couple of, couple of falls ago. I put it in the show. It had two spikes on it, bloomed really nicely. Um, it put up these new growths and had since put up more, another fan. It, had, it was recently repotted, I think last year, 2019. So it's still kind of settling into its new. This one also was a recent repot, Half Honey. I've had this for many years and it's bloomed for me about every other year it blooms. Um, this is one that I was gonna put in the show when I did, when I was doing a display with Slava and Mike. And it had two beautiful spikes on it and then we left it in the car while we were setting up in the spikes all ground up. So that's a nice thing that is Philippinens times Primulinum and because of the Primulinum it is a sequential bloomer so that's a nice sequential blooming multi-floral. Now as I go down this way here are some more paths. This is one that bloomed for me a couple years ago, Path of Wonder, Extravaganza times Henriana. Maybe it was last year, but it did bloom. There's the bloom spike. Put up this fan, and it's still putting up leaves right there. I, I don't, can't remember. Yeah, it did bloom in the spring, I think. Can't remember. It was either fall or spring, that's what it was. And this is one that I got last year. This is the Venustum that bloomed for me last year. Uh, last spring. You can see here's the bloom spike and it put up this new fan and that's what it's doing. This is my Charles Worthy eye path. That's a species and this is the plant that bloomed for me last year. No, yeah it did bloom for me and then this year it put up a sheath or uh, the start of a growth and then it blasted. But it also put up Two, two more new growths. So it's doing well despite, it's about time for me to repot this um, as it approaches the edge of that pot. And then this is a mod eye type path that is looking like it is dehydrated. You can see it was repotted in a, a year ago, roughly, but you can see it still looks like it's dehydrated at a rough time, acclimating. Um, didn't bloom for me. I think it did put up a spike, but it blasted last year. That's Hawaiian Treasure, which is Illusion times that. All right, moving on down this way. I have, this is my Michael Kupovich that bloomed couple of years ago and 
has these two baby growths coming along after a slow growing multifloral Michael Kupovich is half Philippines crossed with half Sandoriano. So Sandoriano is very slow growing. Then behind here is my Lady Isabel times Rothschildianum, which is Lady Rothschild, which bloomed for me last winter into spring. Um, let's put up this little new growth. Yeah, it looks like that's it. This is the one that it bloomed off of. So it does look like there's putting up another one down there. So that's good. That is good. The more of those fans, the better. Um, okay, moving left is a plant that I got at Nats. Well, I got it at the um, Missouri Botanical Garden last year, last spring, about a year ago. I was actually looking for bulldogs, but bulldogs had gone up in price. And I'd always wanted one of those sequential paths like Primulinum or Victoria, Victoria Marii, Marai, or uh, there's another one. Um, but I've always, uh, I, I've seen this one before and I never saw it available. This is Spicerianum times Victoria Marai, which is a sequential. So when I know um, Spicerianum is the green and white, has a white hood on the, the green lip, I believe it's green. It has green in it. Maybe it's, uh, I think it has maybe some hairs on it, but I post a picture of I would post a picture of Spicerianum, but it is a sequential multifloral. Actually, Spicer, yeah, Spicerianum is a multifloral. And then over here is one that had bloomed for me a couple years ago, maybe three years ago, and then I almost lost it. Uh, this is Path Pinocchio, which is a multifloral times Path. No, Pinocchio is a sequential bloomer. Uh, I guess it could be multifloral as well. Path Chua would answer is a uh, multifloral, known for its flower count. Uh, so, anywho, uh, the Chua Hua dancer has Sandarianum and something else in it. Very slow growing. Oh, gigant Gigantifolium, I believe. And, or Gigantium. Gigantifolium. But, anywho, uh, it's very curly um, petals, not so long, but short, uh, big fat lip, uh, really pink, nice flower. I think I have a picture of that because it did bloom for me before. And to the left here is my pride and joy, my Pafstonii, which is a species. These are from Borneo and they uh, grow on limestone cliffs. Very slow growing, but it is putting up a new leaf, I believe, inside of there, which is nice. So someday, hopefully, I will see this bloom again. It did bloom for me a few years back. It's been a long time, maybe three years. But for me, in, in my history with growing multiflorals, they usually take a year off in between blooms or two once they get to be mature size, meaning that they'll start to bloom in that pattern. They, I've never had a multi-floral bloom every year. Maybe they just never got big enough in my care or enough fans. Um, but anyway, this one down here is relatively new. I got this at Hauserman, I think, or somewhere. But anyway, it's St. Pino, which is Pinocchio crossed with St. Swithin. St. Swithin is, um, Not sure what Saint Swithin is uh, right now. I've tipped my tongue, but right here is Philippines times Rothschildianum, and I believe that is Saint Swithin. That is Saint Swithin. So, because Prince Edward of York, which I have somewhere, maybe, maybe I don't have Prince Edward of York. That is Sandarianum crossed with Philippines. No, 
Sandarian I'm crossed with Philippines, I believe, or Rapture. Now I'm getting all confused. Let's just stick to what I'm doing. These are the paths that I have, and this is Saint Swift, and I know. Okay. It's got to be Rothschild plus Sandarianum for the other. Um, and I don't see any more multiflorals or any more paths. That must be it. But yeah, how I grow them is I leave them in all year. I used to put them out in the summer, um, but that was kind of a mistake on my part because I had them in shade. They can't take full sun. And so they were under my my uh, my canopy out there, which has the vine growing over it. And so the, uh, the water, when it rained, would drip down into the fans. And, you know, that led to a lot of rot. I lost, uh, I used to have a Sandarianum, I lost it. I used to have my um, uh, um, Lady Isabel. That's how I lost my Lady Isabel. And that's how I almost lost this, well, my Chuahua Dancer down here. The Chuahua Dancer crossed with me. That's how I almost lost that plant. So, anyways, I was babbling. I walked past a couple more paths, which are right here. This is my Henriana, which is a species has bloomed for me, but it has been struggling since I repotted it, but I believe it does have a new growth coming up out of there. It did bloom a couple years ago. I'll put a picture. And next to this is my Henriana crossed with Helen, Helen I, which did bloom last year and, or two years ago and then bloomed again with two spikes. But while I was gone on big, on, uh, out west came back and that's where the possums came in or something came in and ate the spikes and that's that and again this is my Hermonii which is a natural hybrid between Helen I and Path Escoriole But anyway, folks, this is kind of a long video. But as far as my culture, as I was saying, I leave them inside now. In the summer, it is, of course, warm. They do are, they are provided with the shade cloth to keep them in mostly shade. They're watered once a week, fertilized weekly, weekly. During the winter, a uh, little more sun than in the summertime. Uh, less, little less water, unless they're actively growing, um, and that's it. Uh, some of the uh, multi-florals I do add a little bit of chopped uh, uh, our oyster shell, but I'm actually trying to get some oyster shell. I should have took, took the oyster sh oysters off my plate that I had last weekend. Duh. Anywho, guys, thanks for watching. Enjoy your orchids. Bye.